And then I received an article emailed to me this week. Uh, and in this article, it's a long article, but in this article, there was this individual, Dr. Simi, and I don't know who the Dr. Simi is, but he, uh, he uh, has this little story he tells in the middle of this article. It says, some years ago, I went to an American university where I did my work in church history, and I met one of my church history teachers, and in conversation with him, he said, you'd be very surprised to know what my present assignment is. So I said, yes, I, I might be. What is it? Well, I've been spending about two months at the White Estate Vaults. And these are not Adventists, folks. And, uh, and I said, well, what conclusion did you come to? Well, he said, the World Council of Churches has been picking up the tab. They wanted me to uh, comment on the question of Ellen G. White because of Dr. Handpicker's previous statement. I've been investigating, and they have been very courteous, and they gave me every facility, but, he said, the thing that amazes me about the Seventh-day Adventists and the thing that amazed me particularly about the White Estate was how they ever got any work done. That phone, it buzzed from first thing in the morning to last thing at night. The questions, the kind of questions which any person with common sense ought to be able to answer, they would have to inquire what Ellen White said about it. Wow. So evidently, some non-Adventists have picked up on, on the struggle that some Adventists have with believing obvious truths without a confirming Ellen White statement to say it's okay to believe it. Sadly, many people have been raised not to think for themselves. Not to become mature Christians, as Hebrew 5.14 says, those who have developed by practice the ability to discern the right from the wrong, but instead have been conditioned to look to some authority to tell them the answer. And for those who need an Ellen White quote, this is not what Ellen White taught. This is... Um, from Education, page 17. Every human being created in the image of God is endowed with a power akin to that of the Creator, individuality, power to think and to do. The men whom, in whom this power is developed are to be men who bear responsibility. And I would say the people rather than the men. This is, this is back in the day where the men used humanity, basically. It's, it's, it's really a gender-neutral statement when she wrote it. Uh, it is the work of true education to develop this power to train the youth to be thinkers not mere reflectors of other men's thoughts. I just love that. It's a great quote. And it, says, um, it goes on to say, we must study the truth for ourselves. No man should be relied upon to think for us. No matter who he is or in what position he may be placed, we are not to look upon any man as a criterion for us. And that would include her. That would include her. So what makes us vulnerable to be so easily confused? and therefore so willing and eager to have someone else tell us the answer, we have fallen victim, I think, to the misunderstanding of sola scriptura. The idea that scripture must be kept separate from science and experience. Rather than integrating our understanding of scripture with how reality actually works as God's constructed his universe. But God has given us three threads of evidence we've talked about in our class before. Scripture, science, experience, all integrated together. And you remember the Bible quotes for that. All Scripture is God-breathed and useful in teaching, correcting, training, righteousness. God's divine nature has been seen in what he has made so that men are without excuse. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Experience me. Check me out. But for those of you who, based on reason, evidence, logic, and Scripture, can't come to that conclusion, here's an Ellen White quote for you. Uh, Christ Object Lessons, page 125. <laughs> The great storehouse of truth is the word of God, the written word, the book of nature, and the book of experience in God's dealing with human life. 